So for this video, we're going to be installing GLFW. Um, so I'm in a web browser here. Just did a search for it. I'm going to click on the site here. Uh, now there's several kinds of downloads that we have available here, and um, I'm going to go with. So you have the 32-bit binaries and 64-bit, um, or you can um, compile it from source code. I'm going to go with the binaries and because uh, it's a bit simpler. And also, the 32-bit or 64-bit is based on not what your system is, but rather what kind of software you're going to be targeting. And um, I think it, you're going to have more... Well, it doesn't really matter for our purposes. Um, I think we're going to have more um, compatibility with the 32-bit one. So. Let's go with that, and uh, you can see that you've got uh, Visual C++ or plain I mean, GW as your options there. So um, I'm going to yeah open it. It will probably unzip automatically there. I've got the library. Um, I'm going to do. So we're, we're going to have this include um, header file that's going to be important. And then we have the library itself, which I'm going to use this static library right here. So really, it's just these two things that I need. So I'm going to bring up another file explorer window here. And um, I am going to, let's see here. And so I'm just going to make a new directory for this uh, project here, and uh, just call it uh, glfw test. I guess it doesn't really matter. And here we have an empty directory, and uh, I'm going to make a new folder and call it dependencies. Then I'm going to let's see here. I can just drop this one right in there. I'm just going to copy paste this in here. And uh, we're also going to want the include header. So I think this should be OK just to copy paste this in here like this. So I'm going to bring up PowerShell. You can use CMD if you want. And uh, let me just navigate to the correct directory here. There it is. And so first, I'm, I'm just going to make a example basic C program. Um, just so that we make sure that that kind of stuff is working fine before we um, start using GLFW. So I'm going to use Vim. You can use whatever you want. And main.c. Let's do this. So do int main. And just, let's just do print f hi. We're going to need our input output library. So include actually angle brackets stdio.h. And then gcc main.c. I don't know why the Windows one takes so long. Anyway, it dot. I mean, that was relatively long for how simple this program was. Um, and it works. Okay, so GLFW in the documentation has this example code here. I'm going to copy that. And again, vim main.c. I'm going to hit 7. DD is going to just delete all that stuff. And control uh, I to enter insert mode, control V. Uh, escape to exit insert mode, control U. I really need to get the something where the um, keys show up on the screen. But anyway, I'm going to edit this because this is not exactly correct to this and actually dependencies slash. Um, I don't think it matters about this slash how it's written. Um, so anyway, so main.c, so we got that. Um, yeah, so we're ready to compile. GCC main.c, we are going to want to do this, and it will um, it will include 
this, it will look in this directory when it looks for header files um, or for libraries. And um, then what uh, we're going to need be some libraries here OpenGL 32, GDI 32, and we also want to include the actual library for GLFW. Um, which I believe was lib something there. I pushed tab and I have it completed there. So let's see, enter a.exe, and here's our window. So um, that's the goal of this tutorial is to make this window. Um, next will be to make a rectangle, a colored rectangle inside of it using, of course, OpenGL. And um, yeah, uh, also I'm going to, the Linux videos up to this point are already there. Uh, I'm going to do Mac OS. And then once we have these three platforms, um, basically we can write code once and do it for all these three platforms. Uh, WebGL will be done later, that will be separate. Um, once we have a rectangle, I want to dive straight into some really cool stuff that we can do. like. Uh, ray tracing, ray marching, and make some really cool stuff. Unlike m most tutorials out there, which, uh, you know, the standard thing to do would be to go from the rectangle to a cube and then rotate the cube around and, and do a bunch of 3D stuff. I want to definitely do all that stuff, but I want to do it later. So there'll be kind of two branches, if you will. They'll be good at getting into um, ray marching and some really cool stuff that we can do just with a, within a rectangle. And then there will be the sort of standard uh, 3D stuff. And uh, yeah, so it's like two branches. And then you have later stuff that kind of applies to all of it, like um, uh, what is it, post-processing filters and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so and yeah, um, uh, frame buffers. And then also we'll have, of course, textures uh, and will be early on. And then we have WebGL stuff uh, where we'll do the same stuff. You also have like uniform buffer objects, which are for storing data basically that are used by your shaders. And yeah, I should really say this all in a separate video. I, I plan to remake the um, kind of intro video and explain everything that's going to be done. Um, so that's it for this video. If you want to help my channel grow, definitely. Uh, share, liking, subscribing, commenting, that all helps. I also have a Patreon account, which is uh, in the description. And if you are, of course, if you want a certain type of video, you can leave that in the comments, let me know. You can also sign up for, I think it's the second tier in my Patreon and request a video. And as long as it's a reasonable request, I will uh, fulfill that. That's for a $5 a month pledge at this point. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and have a good one.